This is a brand new variable neutral density filter from Polar Pro, and so is this. But what if I told you you could swap out either of these faster than it takes to say their name? the Helix Maglock filter system. I've been using these for the last few weeks now on all of my projects, and I just gotta tell you about them. Let's get into it. So let's start off by showing you how these bad boys work. First things first, you're going to take your standard lens cap and toss it out. You don't need this anymore. Okay, don't really toss it out. Just keep it in that lens box and put that box inside of another box and put that inside of some random closet until one day you randomly decide to sell that lens on Facebook Marketplace. Okay, so that out of the way, you essentially have a filter system base that looks a little bit like a step-up ring. You screw this onto all of your lenses and now you'll keep them there for basically all of eternity because you're gonna like these things that much. They come in every thread size, so get the threads that you need and it'll step up to the size of the filters, which are all the same size. Now that you've got the thread base installed, we can move on to the filter itself, the scuba, self-contained banger apparatus. I guess technically it's scuba. Okay, look, Polar Pro doesn't call it that, that's just me. They instead call it the Defender 360 because you have a front and a back lens defender to protect the entire thing. It essentially comes in three parts. You have the filter itself, which is sandwiched between two magnetic locking lens caps, conveniently labeled F and R for front and rear. To attach it to the lens, all you've gotta do is push in these little locking tabs, give a little twist, pull off the back cap. Now we come over to our lens, line up the tabs with that little mark, and give it another little twist to lock it into place. The front lens cap operates in the same way. Push in the tabs, twist it to the mark, pull it off. Okay, so Polar Pro isn't the first company to make a magnetic filter, and these filters are very similar to the other effects filters in the Polar Pro lineup. So what makes them so great? Are there any downsides to these bad boys? Why yes, dear viewer, and I'm so glad you asked. First and foremost, the best thing about the Helix Maglock system is the speed. Oh, open your door! No, not that speed. We've all been there. You have your camera out, you have a nice little UV filter on there, you know, for protection but then you realize you wanna add an ND filter. Maybe you're filming in the bright sun, maybe you're just going for a sweet long exposure photo. Typically this means you have to unscrew the UV filter, drop it in your filter case, pull out another ND filter, put that thread back on, screw it back in, and by that point, you've either missed your shot or you're just annoyed as all hell. Now let's compare that to the Maglock system. First and foremost, in my opinion, you don't really need a UV filter when you've got the Helix system installed because you've got some protection from the filter base itself. But more on that in a second. So now all you have to do is put that desired filter out, pop it on, lock it into place. Let's do a quick little side-by-side -side comparison just to show you how fast it is. And you know what else is super fast? Tapping that subscribe button. We're on the road to 20K, so come on in. Join us. Now this also comes in super handy when you're switching lenses. Say you're shooting on a wide angle and then you want to quickly swap over to a 2470 or even a telephoto. Well, swapping the filter is basically as quick as swapping the lens itself. Now, as I mentioned, Polar Pro aren't the first ones to have a magnetic filter system, but they are the first to have a mag lock filter system. Let's just be honest here. Magnets are among the coolest things out there. Give me a well-placed magnet in a product and I'm gonna be hyped. But you see, an issue with other magnetic filter systems is that they're just magnetic, meaning they can super easily fall off in your bag or when they get bumped, or they can be really difficult to actually line up correctly. But with the maglock system, not only do they have magnets, but they also have this nice locking system. That means they're actually locked into place and good to go without having to actually twist them in like a normal filter. This is actually especially useful for the filters that you're twisting the Peter McKinnon VND, the Blue Morphic, the Gold Morphic, you're turning these filters quite frequently, but the locking mechanism is going to stay in place, holding steadier than Hodor. Follow the dog! Another fantastic thing about the Helix Maglock system is its universality. I mentioned that you can select the filter thread size that you want for your lenses, but the great thing is that you keep the same size filters that are now universal for all your lenses once you've got the filter base installed. So whether you're rocking a single prime or you have a whole quiver of glass, you'll always be able to swap the filters between any lens. Okay, so now while I don't need to be the one to tell you that you should always be shooting in raw, that doesn't necessarily mean you should always be going in raw. And by that I mean, always use protection. For your lens, that is. 
Luckily for us, the Helix system keeps you safe. These things are made out of brass, and not only are the filters protected themselves in the case, but you also have a Defender-style lens on the lens cap. This helps to prevent any bumps and scratches on the lens, much better than a standard lens cap. I'm pretty sure you could chuck these things straight into a rock and they would survive. That said, the build quality does come at a slight cost. The filters themselves are so rugged that if you have a bunch of them in your bag, they are going to be a tad bit heavier than if you're using just a filter case with multiple filters. Personally, I think that the added weight is worth it, but it is something that is certainly worth considering. Now, all of these features aside, it doesn't really matter if the filters themselves suck. Well, good news to report here, they absolutely do not suck. Far from it, actually. I've used Polar Pro filters for many years now, and their glass quality has always been second to none in my experience. This is important because you don't wanna be adding a crummy piece of glass to your very, very nice lens. That's like shooting through a car window. It's always gonna look crummy. But on these, for example, you have absolutely no vignetting, even when super wide on a 16 millimeter lens, for example. Many VNDs also are prone to having image quality issues. Whether it's a strong green or sometimes even an orange color shift or having some banding in areas when you twist them, most VNDs certainly just aren't worth the money. But Polar Pro has continued to iterate on their Peter McKinnon VND line, this being the third generation of the system, and I can assure you that they are just as good, if not better, than the previous. No banding, no vignetting, no gross color cast, haptic feedback between the stops, but still easy to turn. Honestly, these things are great. You also have mist editions of the VNDs, which have, in my opinion, the perfect strength of diffusion at 1 8 strength. You get just a little baby bit of bloom without getting too crazy with it. I personally stick to the two to five stop mist for a lot of my scenarios on the video side of things, but there's also a normal two to five, a six to nine, and a six to nine with mist, whatever tickles your fancy. Now I will admit I do have one qualm with these, and that is that there's no label on the VND to let you know whether it is missed or not. It only says it here on the lens cap. Hey, so editor Kyle here. I just realized that there is a difference. The missed version has black numbers and the non-missed version has white numbers. I am dumb, so just ignore that part. Beyond the VNDs, there are also a few additional filters in the Peter McKinnon edition of the Helix Maglock filters. That's a mouthful. There's also just the normal mist if you are shooting in a darker scenario and you just want a nice little subtle bloom. And if you want some additional effects, there's also the blue and gold morphic filters to get that nice little anamorphic layer. I absolutely love adding these flares to my videos to give that nice cinematic look that everyone's looking for and always going on about. But that said, I do have some slight qualms with the morphic filters. First, if you go wider than 20 mil, you can kind of see the filter's bands in the image. It can also be a little bit difficult to get the front lens cap off for the Maglock lens cap on the blue morphic because it is free spinning, meaning you either have to kind of have a well-placed thumb or just sort of get lucky to be able to get that front lens cap off. But these minor things aside, these are absolutely the best filters I have ever used. I have immediately swapped out my entire filter kit to these, which, mind you, is pricey, but in my mind, it is absolutely worth the investment. I'm curious to know, though, if you think it's worth the investment. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.